One of the cool things with the SQL engine is anywhere where you would normally use an expression or a calculation, you can use a SQL statement. The ability to nest SQL within SQL within SQL, etc., is very cool because it lets you have a nice natural flow to writing your SQL statements. I need a value. Where's it come from? Oh, that table. I just write a query and the job is done. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's not such a big deal. That's just part and parcel of the SQL language. But here's a quick tip where nesting SQL statements might actually give you some performance benefits when it comes to calling peel SQL functions from within your SQL statements. I'll create a table here. It's going to have 30 rows in it, and I've got two columns. The first column has the values 1 through 30, so 30 distinct values. But the second column, just using a modulo function, you can see only has the values 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. I'm going to create a sample peel SQL function now that takes in a value and simply returns that value. But to mimic this peel SQL function being expensive, it's going to sleep for one second. I'm using dbms lock, you could use dbms session as well. So in this case, every time I call that function, it's going to take one second to evaluate its result, which in this case is just returning the same value. Let's now assume I need to call this peel SQL function every time I query a row from my table called t. The function takes one second to run. I've got 30 rows in my t table. Therefore, when I do a select from t, you can see the elapsed time was 30 seconds. That's not unexpected. However, let's now take that same peel SQL function call and nest it in a select from Joule. There's no difference to the functionality here, but we can see the elapsed time has dropped dramatically. So what's going on? Whenever the database sees a scalar query, as in a select statement in the select clause, it uses some embedded caching. If we think back to when this table was created, there were only five distinct values for the column R1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Because I've now nested that peel SQL function call in a select from dual, what the database does is cache some of the results as it's going. It worked out that when I passed in the value of 0 to this function called demo, it got a value back as 0 because we are simply returning the same value. The next time I came to run it, it simply uses that cached result. It didn't have to go call the function and therefore I avoided that one second delay. In this case, you can see the total elapsed time was only five seconds because there were five distinct values that we had to call the function for. Each of those values and their results got cached and therefore we didn't need to revisit the function again. Obviously the cache is not unlimited in size and therefore if you have a huge broad depth of different values, then you'll still incur the overhead of calling it. But for the vast majority of the time, you'll see significant benefits simply by nesting these calls in a select from Joule. Or if this function satisfies it, you could do a deterministic definition on the function as well. You might be thinking, well, what if it's not a peel SQL function I'm calling? What if it's a scalar query that wants to return multiple values? In this case, I'm trying to do a query and get three columns back in my scalar subquery. Then I get an error, a scalar subquery, because it's returning a value into a column, into a result set, then it can only return one value. The problem there is, of course, is if you wanted to get all three values, now I'm writing three separate scalar queries, and the database won't necessarily cache them, and so you might be doing three times the work to get those values back from a common table. Because I have to return a single value, one way of working around this is you could create an object type. I can create an object type here which contains the three values of interest. And now when I do my scalar query, what I do is I compose those three elements into a single object. I've now met the rules of returning just a single thing, even though it's a complex object type, from my scalar query, and the query now works. To get the individual results back, I then have to nest that as an inline view so I can pick apart each of those object types. But now I've got just a single query to go get multiple values. An alternative would be to use a lateral join. A lateral join achieves a similar kind of result, although this would only work if you know for a fact that you're returning just a single row. Because a lateral join, being one of the normal joins, could return you multiple rows for a single probe from the outer table. But if it's just a unique key lookup, then perhaps a lateral join might be useful as well. Either way, if you're looking at running scalar queries in your select statements, check out scalar query caching, especially for peel SQL function calls, because you might get some performance benefits.
Ah. Uh-huh.